Okay, so this is my second outdoor garden. I call it the secret garden because it's kind of hidden away behind these trees. And I did plan on making this a garden, but I don't have any chickens at the moment. And I figured I'd try to utilize this spot for something. I can't mow it and the weeds are growing wild in it. So why not try to do something with it? So what I did was is when I start my tomatoes, I usually start four seeds or four or more seeds. Sometimes I'll get a bunch more come up. And all the leftovers I have to plant somewhere or just pull them out and throw them out. But I don't like to do that because those plants can be very productive plants. And it's also a backup in case the plants that I did try to pot and grow start to foul out somewhere down the road. And I have probably about three or four tomato plants that are doing that now. And they're, they're, they're starting to stunt, they're, the leaves are kind of starting to rot off, they're not growing, they're showing me problems. So something's wrong with the plant or the soil, maybe there's something wrong with it and it's not going to be productive. So I always have backups growing somewhere else. I don't like to just pick one plant and then grow it and hope that that plant does good because you can't guarantee that you may have a problem down the road and if you got two or three the same variety growing in different areas of your yard if one fails you always have another growing somewhere else that you can always go back to so in here as you can see this is where I planted all my tomatoes and they're doing okay I didn't amend the soil at all I didn't do anything with the soil I just planted them in the dirt and that was it now, I shot this video earlier in the year, probably about two and a half weeks ago, and the plants were much smaller, and they've gotten a lot bigger now, but they were much smaller before, and I forgot to upload that one because I'm uploading other videos. I forgot that I had that video, and it's already outdated for me, so maybe I'll, I'll throw it out there in the winter time for, you know, videos that didn't make the cut. I'll just kind of throw that out there, but... I kind of want to give you like relevant stuff that's kind of happening at the moment when I upload it. So like this video now will get uploaded in the next couple of days. That way you know where I'm at with my garden, like what stages are, are things at this time of the year for me in my part of the country. So yeah, these tomatoes are really blighting up really bad. Actually, most of my tomatoes this year are really coming in with the late blight. I believe it's late blight. I don't think it's early blight. It's coming in fast and strong, and it's really coming in hard, and it's probably going to take out most of the tomato plants early. So because this soil isn't amended, they're not going to outpace the blight, unfortunately. Now, the tomatoes in my other garden over there, those tomatoes are planted in much looser soil. There's amendments. There's compost in there and everything. They can actually outgrow the blight and they'll be able to produce tomatoes before they die here i don't think this is going to be the case now some of them might be some some of these might do good like this one's you can see there's a tomato there and there's a, another tomato somewhere down there you know so some of them might put out tomatoes but it's competing against blight it's competing against the gray and white mold that i get here it's almost like a downy mildew i guess you could say and it's really they're having a hard time fighting off all these diseases that we get so I don't know how far these are going to get and they're a little small right now for this time of the year like you see my other tomato plants are five times the size of these right now so uh, but at least they're growing and hopefully I can get some tomatoes off of these and so over here I planted a couple of my extra cucumbers down here I forgot what those are the boothy tooth I think they are I don't know what these are. Look at that little round thing down there. I don't know what those are. Those might be my little potato cucumbers. I'm going to do a taste test on one of those coming very soon. Because I, I got a couple of them ready in the greenhouse. So those are ready. But these are extra plants. And like I say, when I have extras, I just bring them out and plant them out here. And whatever they do, they do. I have the... Mexican sour gherkin over here growing. I had a couple extra of those. I planted, I forgot, six of them. So I got three of them growing in a greenhouse. I got a couple in the garden. No, I got none in the greenhouse. I got three three or four of them in the, in the garden and I one or two extra here. So they're growing out here. You can see it's spread all the way down here. 
I just let it go. I don't do anything back here. I'm not weeding. I'm not doing anything. Just let it do whatever it wants here. This is, like I say, this is just for the extras. Plus, I'm also trying to find out what's going to grow back here and what's not going to grow back here. Because I, I never grew here before, and I don't know, because of all the shade, you can see I've got nothing but trees above it. So the only sun that this gets is afternoon sun and maybe a little bit of high noon sun, but that's about it. So it's not really getting much sun at all. It's, it's going to be a lot slower growing. But these are all, this whole row here is all my extra peppers. And they're doing okay. Peppers you can get away with partial shade with peppers. They'll do fine partial shade. You can get away with partial shade on tomatoes as well. But they won't grow as hardcore. Tomatoes really, if you give them a lot of sunlight and a lot of water, they just will grow out of control. With, with peppers, it doesn't matter. They Pepper plants just have their own speed that they grow at and that's it <laughs> you're not going to get them to gr really grow that much faster under any condition but yeah you can see they're still doing okay and this soil is just dirt there's no you know there's no amendment to it there's nothing done to it but what i can't say about it is is this is this was my chicken coop where my chicken's been crapping for years and years and years and years and years and that chicken manure is in the soil to some degree. So it is helping the plants grow a little bit. I should mulch this, to be honest with you. I just haven't had time to get back here and do it. But yeah, I should put some kind of leaf. You know, I got leaves growing back in the back of my, not growing, but I got leaves in the back of my yard. I can just mulch that with leaves. So that, that'll increase the growth of them a lot. If you, if you never mulched your vegetables outside, put mulch on. You'll see your vegetables will bump after you do that. This is the garden huckleberry. And this is kind of a weed to me, but I never did a review on a garden huckleberry. I did a review on the wonderberry, sunberry, but I never did a review on the garden huckleberry. And I'm going to do a review this year for you on these berries. And it's this one seems to be doing pretty good back here, even in the shade. So I'll talk a little bit more about the berries once I get to the review part. But And I got some eggplants growing back here, which are actually doing better than anywhere else in my yard. The eggplants that are growing, you know, in my main garden are absolutely destroyed by the flea beetles. They're just wiped them out, basically. So there's nothing I can do about that. But the ones I planted back here, they're doing okay. They're not really nothing to brag about. Normally eggplants, if I grow them in pots and I keep them in my greenhouse and I take care of them, they grow really big and nice like tomato plants. But anything you grow out here, outside of that greenhouse, anything out here really doesn't do as good as the greenhouse because of the insects. And you have no way to control the water and everything. It's nothing, it's too wild of an environment to really have an outdoor garden where I live anyway. Like I say, I'm about 1,100 feet above sea level. I'm in the mountains. You know, you could even see back there, you know, in, in the horizon, see the clouds in the mountains. That's the way it is here. It's just, it's, it's not ideal for most vegetables. You really got to go out of your way to make things grow here. But nevertheless, some things are doing okay. Here's some basil. I think this is licorice basil. Yep, that's licorice basil. That's doing okay. I'm sure if I amend this soil, if I was to put down a good mulch and put down a good layer of soil down in here and mix that in really good, I'm sure these plants would do a lot better here. But again, this is being grown in 50% sunlight. I'm, it's just... It's not really getting that much sunlight, so I don't know what this is. That's a weed, I think. Right? Oh, I'm pulling things out. I don't even know if they're weeds. This is my, uh, I forgot what they call that thing. It's a grain. It looks like lamb's quarter. It's not lamb's quarter. It's... Things are falling around here. Uh, here's the um, scallions that I grew from the cuttings, the bottom parts that were left from my thing. So the scallions are doing really good here. So I'm, I might just, for the back of this garden, I might just use this to grow. Not, not for extras. I don't want to do this again with extras because I actually want my extras to do really good, as good as my main crop, like my peppers and tomatoes, I really want those to do really good because if, like I say, one fails, I want something to back, have as a backup. Whereas over here, I didn't even label most of this stuff. I just planted it and whatever it is, it is, you know. 
but I really want to grow it where everything's labeled and I know exactly what I got. So, you know, if, like I say, one fails, I have something to, to fall back on. But back here isn't an ideal spot to really do what I did. I just didn't have anywhere else to plant. I figured this would be a good spot. But at least now I kind of know what will grow here and what won't grow here. And I'm going to let some of the stuff grow through the winter. Whatever's, you know, whatever I don't harvest, if there is any kind of harvest out of here, I'm just going to let grow through the winter. I'm not going to do anything with it. I want to see what comes up the next year. So we'll see how things do the following year with the seeds that come up from these plants and drop and then grow again. So we'll see how that works out. What else we got in here? We got all kinds of stuff in here. I got some carrots. Carrots seem to be doing really good in this soil as well as being in partial shade. They're pretty happy. The carrots are doing good. The potatoes didn't do good at all. The purple potatoes are back there buried in the dirt somewhere. I got to dig those up eventually. I just forgot about them, but I do got to get those out of there soon. They didn't do good. As soon as I transplanted them, they died. So that wasn't a good idea to do that. That was definitely a fail. Now, potatoes might do good there, providing start from the beginning, but being I transplant them, going from direct sun and to transplant, they didn't do good. I, I could just plant them over there on Potato Hill, you know. I'll just eventually do something with that. I got some leftover lettuces. Those, these are the um, Boston Burgundies. Those were some leftovers. And we got a sweet potato I planted here, which is growing pretty nicely actually <laughs> and unfortunately did it root yeah it rooted down you see your sweet potatoes what they do is i didn't notice when i started because i never grew sweet potatoes but what they do is they put these runners out and these runners throw down roots and those roots will start putting down potatoes so it's not a good idea i don't believe to run to grow sweet potatoes up a trellis you're probably, with sweet potatoes, you want to let them grow along the ground and let them put down as many roots from the nodes as possible because that's where they're going to drop a potato eventually. So I would imagine that's probably the best way you'd want to handle that. And we just got some other stuff here. I got some rutabagas growing here that were extras. I got a, another one of those parsnips growing. Some random stuff. I'm back over there. I got some of those... Uh, Everglade tomatoes, which if I could get the Everglade tomato to propagate itself yearly back here, I'd be good with that. I don't have a problem with them growing wild back inside here. There's no problem with that, but I just don't want them in my main garden. When I do a garden update, you'll see why. Because I let one go on purpose, and I just want to show you how big these things can get. And that's about it. Here's the uh, lychee tomato. This was a volunteer, by the way. Oh, that thing's got thorns on it. I can't handle it. You can't handle this plant. It's like handling a rose bush. Yeah, that's a lychee tomato. So maybe we'll get some lychee tomatoes. We'll do another taste test on it. And what else we got? The lettuce didn't really do good this year at all. Most of them all bolted right away. I don't know if lettuce will do good in partial shade. You can see that's lettuce right there. I don't know which one that is, but it bolted. And the bugs back here are absolutely phenomenal. They're tearing things up back here like you wouldn't believe. They, they chewed that one... Uh, I think that's a turnip or something like that. It's a turnip or a rutabaga. It tore it to the ground. That's the end of that. It's a rutabaga. Yeah, those are my rutabagas I planted back here. These three or four are planted here. Chewed to the ground. It doesn't mean that it's dead. It just means the insects destroyed it. Hopefully it'll winter over and they'll come up next year. Maybe we could get some seeds. And there's my sorghum, which I planted back here, and then that was a mistake. The sorghum really needs to be planted like corn like you see back here you see that corn back there growing that's how sorghum has to grow just like corn you can't grow that like i should have never put it back here i put it all the way in the back now if i planted that sorghum where those tomatoes are up in the front they might have done pretty good but i put them back here and that wasn't a good move so these are probably never going to produce anything i don't think i'll ever see any kind of grain out of it so that's it for this. So I'll just give you a kind of a step of nasty stuff here. I'll just give you a little panoramic view. All right, that's what I got going over here. So next year, this will be this will be a lot better next year because I'm gonna if I'm still here, I'm I am gonna be selling the house. So I don't know if I'll still be here, but if I'm here while I'm selling the house, I'm still gonna do the gardening anyway. I will um, amend the soil. 
so we get better growth out of it. And now, th this thing, you should have seen, it was filled with weeds. I had to rip all these weeds out of here, and it was a nightmare. And I just let some of the wild stuff still grow here. This is catnip. Uh, so this is for Chico. And I just leave it. It doesn't bother me, really. I got some mullein growing here and stuff like that. So, And I also, another bad thing I did is I had, again, I had nowhere to plant my pumpkins that I wanted to grow so I just kind of put them back here and one of the reasons why I did kind of plant them here I could have found another spot in my yard to plant these but one of the reasons why I did plant them here is because the sun was coming out so hot it was just literally damaging everything it was just cooking the plants and so I wanted to get them in partial shade so I put them back here Probably not the best idea to do. A lot of it just never took. A lot of it just died. And the, the insects back here, the slugs, and there's like, you know, cutworms and stuff like that. They come in here. They chew the plant right to the bottom of the stem. Gone. Boom. It's like a, a chainsaw. And they cut them right down. So a, a lot of these things were destroyed because of the insects. Now, unfortunately, that's with these kind of plants, you're going to have nothing but problems with insects. That's just the way it is. What happened is I planted them back here, and I figured I would just see how they do and let them grow. But there's a couple of things here. I got pumpkin pie growing here. Actually, that's the only thing that's kind of really doing okay. I really wouldn't say good, but okay. Uh, you can see it kind of grabbed up, and it's growing along this chicken wire and hopefully it'll grow up tall enough so it can curl up on top of here and then all the way down and everything else so that would be good with the pumpkins I could get maybe one or two small pumpkin pies out of that or sugar pumpkins and maybe I'll do a pumpkin pie video for you I'll show you how I make my pumpkin pie I'll try to make it interesting maybe I'll do something a little different than the normal what you see everybody else do with pumpkin pies, I'll do something a little different. And I do have a couple of ways that I make pumpkins, so. I have my bushmelon here. Unfortunately, that was the last seed I had for the bushmelon. I don't think we're gonna be seeing any bushmelons come off it, so I'm not gonna see a harvest off of that. That's a, that's a dud. This one here, I don't know what this is. It's another gourd of some type. I don't think it's anything of any importance. And what else I got here? I got another. It's like a gourd of something. When it when it makes a gourd, I'll come back and do a review. I don't know what is going to survive over here. Most of the stuff is just going to be dead before cold or the frost comes. Is this? It's not going to produce anything. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I doubt it though. This might do pretty good. This is uh, this is a gourd. I think it's called a spinning gourd. That's a pretty cool looking gourd. So hopefully we can get that to come to fruition. I can get seeds for next year. Those seeds will really grow much better than what you see now. So if I can get most of these plants to produce seed this year, the seeds that come from it for next year will do much better. These plants, will, these plants, if these were seeds from last year, these plants would be already up to the top of this thing already. So that's the problem with planting new seeds in your area. they got to climatize for a year, sometimes two years. And eventually once they do, boom, they take off like a rocket ship. Okay, so here... This is the, um, let's see if I can zoom you in. This is the loofah sponge. And the problem with loofah sponge, in my experience, and I have grown this several times, I think I've only gotten a small loofah one time, and that was it. This is a, this plant you really have to start in January. If you're in a northern, like, six, seven climate zone, six zone, or five zone, you really got to start this indoors. Keep it, trim it back if you have to. You just want to get that root stock going. And you really got to start this in January and grow it until that base gets really matured and ready to blow, bolt out right away. And then you bring it out and you, you plant it. This is a very long season plant. This plant can take probably a couple years to grow. I may even dig this plant out of the ground in the, in the uh, fall before it totally freezes off cut it down you know cut it low and bring that root stock in and maybe try to plant that root stock indoors and get it to kind of grow a little bit indoors very slightly if it gets too long i'm going to keep trimming it back but 
it's very hard for me to get these seeds started. I'm not, I haven't had a lot of success getting, you know, out of every, I don't know, say five, six seeds I start, I get one plant. So it's a very low germination rate. And this here is the Malacan the uh, Casa Banana or Malacontin something, but they call that the Casa Banana. This is another one. It Wrong place to plant it. I'm going to have to, I'm, it's got a rootstock on it. So this plant will grow indoors if you can maintain that rootstock. So I might end up bringing this in in a small pot and just keep that rootstock alive through the winter. I'm not looking to grow it. Just want to keep that root base alive until spring next year and then we can replant that for next year and then i'll probably get some uh, cast bananas out of that but this thing is a very hard plant to actually get a fruit out of up and up this far north i've again i've never had any success with that's a i've had that plant vine out 30 feet long and towards the very end of the year it was the best i ever did towards the very end of the year i just started seeing flowers come off and it was like maybe out of that 30 foot long vine, I've seen maybe six flowers. That was it. And then the winter came in and that was it. It killed it off. We just got some random melons. These are some uh, just random melons I started. They're just starting to kind of grow now. So hopefully they'll decide to kick up maybe mid-August. They'll kick up and they'll start growing and, and I'll get some good growth out of those. But I doubt it. And I got celery growing here, some extra celeries, or I don't even remember what celery this is. It's celery, but it's, it's I'll, if they get big enough, I'll, I'll uh, do a review on it. I don't remember which one that is. And that's my desert melon, which I'm very upset because I actually got one of those seeds to sprout. And I'm just, it's the wrong place to have planted it, and it's probably not going to. Do any good unfortunately because it's it's just not enough light these plants these melons and these vines these need full sunlight eight hours 12 direct sunlight you know not 12 but like eight hours of direct sunlight a day it, without that you're going to get skinny little vines and stuff like this so i did my best you know i didn't know how they would do here so i was kind of experimenting but unfortunately i planted the uh, desert melon here and that was one I probably should have planted in the garden. In fact, I may even dig that up and move it to the garden because I really want to get some kind of a melon out of this thing. I don't have any more seeds, and I can't find anybody who's selling the seeds to the desert melon. So I, I really kind of lost here. I don't know what to do. I, you can't really cut these and root it. and I'm not going to. Not when you got one seed left, you know. But anyway, yeah, that's just a quick look at my uh secret garden in the back and i'll give you an update maybe at the end of the year if there's any significant growth or anything starts interesting back here i'll, I'll give you an update but there's probably not much going to go on it looks like the tomatoes are going to get wiped out fairly soon by the blight there's not going to be much to show you if they get wiped out because they're really the only things that are doing pretty good here all right so yeah i figured i'd share my uh my second garden or my secret garden and uh, show you what's growing on. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.